Good day. This is Chen Yu Li, Director of Taipei Smart City Office. I'm very glad to share the Taipei Smart City project. The vision of the Smart Taipei project, we're not only focusing on to improve the livability of the citizens, also the sustainability of the Taipei. We're also focusing on how to promote the industry of smart city and also how to cooperate with the global smart cities. So I think the definition of the smart city is uh, really different. So in Taipei, the major concept of smart cities is trying to change the culture. That means we try to you know, make the Taipei can be a very, very innovative smart cities. That means we need to do lots of change, especially for the maintenance and system to make the city can be able to work with private sector, especially for the private sector to do lots of innovation idea and projects. So in the past, we already engaged more than 500 stakeholders and facilitated more than 250 projects. And in our system, in the past four years, and in our first four years, start from 2016, actually, you know, we try to build up, we call it a bottom-up poor concept making them. That make the city government can be very easy to work with private sector. And after first phase of four years, we start to, you know, build up another system, we call it a top-down poor concept project. That make the you know, private sector can get the real need from the public sector. And of course, we still have other mechanisms such as the top-down planning, helping the different agency to plan the framework of the ASMA solution and also try to engage the citizens. So I think we'll spend some time to explain the, our PLC poor concept models. As I say, the first phase, what we do is we establish a very, very simple flow that make the private sector can propose to our office and all kind of the possibility to do, to execution, to plan all kind of the smart solutions. I think the major thing we want to do is we want to focus if the solution can deal with any problem. So we will, if the solution can deal with you know, any problem, we will negotiate with the, private, uh, the stakeholders, especially for the department. So we will initiate, the, we call it the poor concept projects. So that makes the type A very easy to get lots of lots of very new ideas from the private sectors. But in, after four years, we realized that it's very difficult to scale up those very innovative ideas because all the ideas come from the private sector. So after four years of practice of the first phase of the poor concept project, we also try to improve our mechanism to make the poor concept project can better to fulfill the need of the city government. So in the phase two, we also collect the need, the demand from the different agency of the city government. So that's why we established the one plus seven working group two years ago. And so now actually in Taipei, we have a two major megan to work with private sector. And the bottom one is what we call the original poor concept project. It's a very easy for the private sector. They can post all kind of the idea to my office and we will establish the scenario for the poor concept projects. And for the one plus seven poor concept project, for every year actually we will call for the solution twice. So during that time, we will collect the needs from the different agency and we will announce the request to all the public. So for the private sector, they can propose the solution, especially focusing on those problems that we propose. And if everything goes well, then we will execution the poor concept projects and we will do a very important that we call the opportunity assessment that to you know to verify if the solution is good enough to scale up. So it probably will become the policy if everything goes well. And I think the major concept to the Taipei City government, we not only want to collect lots of smart solutions, we also want to, to figure out, to find out the real problem of the city government, of the different agency, of the different area. So we're not only focusing on how to make the project can be worked, we also try to understand what exactly the problem of the system. So that's why we're trying to revise the system for many, many times. So luckily we received lots of awards from globally, especially in, we even get a gold award from our magazine. 
and also the Charles Anderson, one of the very famous IoT expert called as a game changer. I think the best concept of the Type Smart City project is we want to build a new model that make public sector can be able to experience all kind of the possibilities without any risk. That's very important. So I believe that's why we increase our ranking of the smart city every year. Uh, last year, I ran Taipei 8 from the more than 100 cities. So now in Taipei, we have three phases for executing the small city project. The phase one is the, we call it the poor concept project. During this phase, it's not a tender, it's more like a PPP, private public partnership model. So that means the government won't spend budget on it, but we will provide all kind of the resources to helping the execution of the project. I think the major purpose of this phase is we want to real face the result of the new idea. So that's why we have a lot of limitation. And it can be very small scales. So we need to understand what exactly we can get from this kind of the new solution, new idea. And if everything goes well, it will become the second phase that made it become the pilot project, tenders, and, and even better, they will become the scale up project. I mean, they become the policies. Now I will show some of the smart solution that we're discussing in the past few years. The first one is about the smart transportation, the autonomous vehicles. In the past few years, we do a lot of experience about the autonomous vehicles. We need to understand the capability and the maturity of the AV. So in the past few years, uh, we are very glad we received a lot of data that make us very useful and very easy to make our policy about the autonomous vehicles. And also, we use lots of sensors, lots of cameras to detect the traffic flow, and that make us can be very easy to predict the traffic situation by the AI and also help us to improve our traffic in Taipei. And for the small building, we have a very classic case that we work with one of the French company. We do the bridge structure monitoring in our search bridge. In the past, actually, we don't have very nice way to monitoring and detect the structure of the bridge. And we're very glad to have this kind of solution that we can work with a stock company and they can provide this kind of solutions. And we all know that the safety of the construction site is very important. So so we also do lots of poor concrete projects in the construction sites. Especially, we install lots of sensors inside the helmet of the workers to make sure the safety and also can do the measurement of the workers. For the education, due to the COVID-19, so there's a lot of change for the study and education. So we not only try to make a small classroom, we also try to adapt new solution. For example, we can very easy to record all the content from the classroom and make the student can be very easy to access to those content at home. In Taipei, we also have very serious AG problem. So we do lots of lots of different solutions trying to help the elder to live well in Taipei. For example, one of the solutions, we're using the Wi-Fi to detect the motion of the elder. We can keep their you know, privacy and also can be very easy to predict and detect any kind of the risk from their home. I think due to the time, if you're looking for a more smart solution of smart city, feel free to visit our website. And also the Taipei Smart City Government, it's Taipei Smart City Project and Taipei Government are very willing to work with any company, any cities globally. So feel free to contact us in the future. This is Chen Yuli, Director of Taipei Smart City Office. Thank you very much.